Now we are back.
I just want to drive my friends. Please, 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 please. And we're looking for a table for about four or five of us. Shall we go and yes, see the table that we're there? Yeah, we're now asked. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, let me join my colleagues who spoke earlier to thank uh, our colleague here, our brother, Dr. Agarwal, for having organized this meeting and having invited us uh, on this very important occasion. This particular session is devoted to human rights and terrorism, and also human rights and the enforcement international criminal justice. We have a number of speakers um, on the panel here. There is Mr. Kamaraja, the Inspector General of Police of India, and Mr. Jamwal, an advocate Supreme Court of India, Mr. Manjit Jil QC of number five chambers, and Mr. Kadman of Nine Bedford uh, Road uh, in, in, in London. Uh, we will proceed immediately to hear the panelists, at the end of which I would like to say a few words also on the matter of the relationship between enforcement of human rights and the administration of international criminal justice. Um, Mr. We'll start off with Mr. Kamaraja. Good afternoon, everybody. It's my proud privilege to be here on this occasion to address the August gathering on this topic, human rights and terrorism. The concept of human rights was first expressed in the year 1948, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which established recognition of the inherent dignity and inalienable rights of all members of the human family. The innocent victims of the terrorism suffer an attack on the most basic, basic rights to live in peace and security. Since the last two decades, the world has been witnessing widespread violence, terrorism at both national and international levels. Many a times, the efforts taken by the governments and international organizations, such as United Nations and other apex bodies, and humanitarian organizations have not brought sufficient and needed results. In the third world countries, violence has become the order of the day. The terrorism, and especially terrorism by indisciplined army, has become a menace for the civil society. Millions of people have lost their 
lives, homes and properties due to cross-border terrorism. In parts of Asia, terrorism has spoiled the very nature of human beings and society. Terrorism came in the international scene after the 11 September bombing of the World Trade Center Twin Towers and the Pentagon. Since it was the first time such attack was experienced in the United States, the entire country shook up to the core, including the then President George W. Bush. The entire nation felt humiliated by the failure of the Federal Bureau of Investigation claimed to be the best in the business to prevent such strategy. tragedy. A similar incident took place back home in India when terrorists targeted the parliament on 13 December 2001. It was for the first time that such a serious attack was mounted on the very symbol of the Republic of India. However, this provided the government a more powerful argument to come up with more stringent and streamlined anti-terror laws in the country. Today, both the world at large and India in particular face daunting challenges in the task of protecting human rights of common people regardless of the country they belong. No country in the world can be said to be free from deadly scourge of terrorism, with the grim specter of terrorism continuing to target innocent and defenseless people. The task has been ever challenging for the institutions around the world. These are turbulent times in many parts of the world. It has become apparent that in many ways the world has become complicated to say the least. The destinies and the interests of the nations and the citizens have become interlinked to such an extent that invariably the action of one has adversely affected the other, leading to strife and suffering. In such a tra tragic situation, it has been mostly the common people, men, women and children, who, whose rights have been violated. In fact, people from all walks of life, irrespective of their caste, creed, color and religion, have been equally affected by violation of the human rights. The Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights condemns terrorism unequivocally and recognizes the duty of states to protect these, those living with their jurisdiction from terrorism. It has been placed a priority on protection of human rights, notably the right to life and the question of protecting human rights in the context of counter-terrorism measures. It 